about right. What you will feel, you will feel the taper, or the, the I'm sorry, the flaring being taken out. A lot of it will be taken out from the seating process anyway. But what this does is it squeezes the case down just a little tiniest bit more so it has more friction holding in the bullet. And what this allows, especially in an automatic pistol cartridge, say the 45, 9mm, 40, or 10mm, is for it not to interfere with the head space while still maintaining its grip on the bullet. And that's how you apply a taper crimp. And then the way you would test this is to either A, take it, take the barrel out of the firearm and drop it in and see if it slides in all the way, or from Ellie Wilson, they sell uh, these little headspace gauges. This particular one's for 9mm, so we can't use it for this. But um, if, say, we had a 9mm and we dropped it all the way in, it should be flush on the bottom of the, of the headspace gauge. These are pretty tight tolerance. And the best bet is to drop it into the chamber of your firearm. Please take it apart before you do that. Okay, I'm going to show you how to test your headspace. I got two barrels before before you here. I have a Glock 30 barrel and 45, and I have a 1911 barrel. This is a full length three sized piece of brass. Headspace headspace is really nice, and it falls out into my hand. I'm going to do the same thing with the Glock barrel. Drops out my hand quite easily. Not always true with jacketed bullets, or any bullet for that matter, because the bullet is starting to work its way into, into the throat and down, and down the bore, but it should pop out quite easily. Now let's take this guy. It doesn't want to go anywhere. This one is not taper current properly. In fact, I had to grab it to pull it out. It wouldn't just drop out. Same with this one. Mm. This one does not have enough taper crimp applied. With a taper crimp, it's not like a roll crimp where you can see it. You'll see like a little bright mark right around the mouth of the case. Now I'm looking at this one right now and I can see that it still has a tiniest bit of flare right at the very end of the case. Although it looks normal. Let's try another, let's try another one. This has a proper taper crimp applied to it. And this is a safe way of, of, of testing it. You don't want to be putting rounds in and out of a fully assembled firearm. That's a good way of having an accidental discharge. And the reason why I'm using these two different barrels is because no two barrels are alike. Even though this one doesn't pop out, it does sometimes but it still comes out quite easily. That means this barrel has slightly tighter tolerances. But this guy you gotta work to get him out. And that's how you test to see if you have a proper taper crank without buying if you don't have or don't want to buy a headspace gauge. Now we'll do the same thing in the headspace gauge. Now the headspace gauge will show you two things. One, it'll fit the headspace gauge plus they're cut to really tight tolerances. Um, but you can actually adjust the taper crimp to your barrel and not to a headspace gauge. Okay, I want you to take a good look at these three bullets here. 
The one on the left has never been seated in the case. The one in the middle had too much taper crimp applied to it. You'll see an impression going around the circumference of the, of the bullet. That's a deformity. Now this one was seated with a proper taper crimp and pulled. Both of these were pulled. This one looks almost as good as one that has not been seated at all. Now when you do this, what you'll run into is accuracy problems. And also you may taper crimp it to the point where you will lose what headspace you were trying to keep when you were originally trying to apply your taper crimp in the first place. So try to avoid applying too much taper crimp.